Greetings viewers, I am Eric the Car Guy and welcome to the second part of the gauge installation in ETCG Dad's truck. Uh, in a previous episode I had done the installation of the gauges physically into the dash. In this episode I'm going to be covering the wiring and all the electronic hookups and everything that makes these gauges work and do what they're supposed to do. And believe me, there is a happy ending. It's installed, it all works great. That being said, let's get to the action right now and we'll catch up at the end. Now that I've got that part of the cluster pretty well sorted out, uh, I'm going to wait till the gauges get here to figure out final placements of things. But in the meantime, what I can do is I can go and work out the electronics. I know the wires and things that I need. I've installed a set of these gauges before, so I know the inputs that I'm going to need for the new gauges. So here I have the old gauge assembly and the schematic for all the gauges on the dash. So this is going to help me figure out what wires I need uh, to pull out of that connector and that harness. This is where the connector comes into the back of the gauge cluster and right here is the schematic for that connector that plugs into here. All these numbers represent different circuits which are listed over on this side. What we're going to be going for is the illumination which when you turn on your headlights you want your gauges to brighten up. Uh, high beam, the left and right turn signals. Uh, also there's a nice ground here uh, there's also an ignition source coming in here. So what I've done to verify the circuits that I'm seeing here before I fully commit is I've got uh, some of these little pin connectors. These are actually for uh, if you're building a connector. So if you're building a connector, these are some of the pins. So I'm able to go in here and actually tie into these circuits. And the one that I've tied into in this location is actually the ground. I think 150, yeah, 150 is a ground. So this one goes to this major ground up here is where this one goes. We can use that ground to figure out the rest of the circuits which are going to run power through them like the high beam and the illumination. In fact number 8 is illumination and number 8 is uh, right next to 150. So if we very carefully sneak in here with our little connector and we actually readjust them so they're not touching one another because that will directly short it out. So with that, we can tie this to our ground since it is our ground. And we can make this, the power coming in, off the power probe. Shush. So now when I activate the power probe, we get illumination. So we know that circuit lights everything up and it's connected to the dimmer switch, but that kind of doesn't matter because the new gauges have their own dimmer switch. But that being said, when we turn the headlights on, the new gauges will light up just like these are. Come down here for the high beam indicator. Uh, it's two down. High beam indicator is uh, on number pin number 11. If we come down here, we sort of see a slash pin 11, 629 right here, and it's just two up from our ground that we just found. Follow that down. It goes in through the uh, high beam headlamp indicator down here. Uh, I've got that hooked up on the back of the cluster assembly. And here's my ground that's hooked up and then two pins over is for the high beam indicator. Now I will activate that and there's the high beam indicator. So we found that circuit. Here's a fun little side note just because, and I found this because I accidentally thought this was the high beams initially, but it's not. If you look up in this corner, you'll see that indicator right there. That's for daytime running lights. And uh, it was January or December 1st. 1989 that all vehicles shipped into Canada had to have uh, daytime running lights and this is the indicator for that. Now there's no bulb or anything back in behind here uh, but everything in this cluster is set up so that you have the indicator for daytime running lights. Left turn signal is coming in at 14 which is right down over here on this one so I'm going to count down on because it's just on the opposite side of where our ground is so we're flipped upside down when we go on the cluster. But on the other side, we're going to say that that one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven in from the top. So we'll go up to these pins and count seven in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that pin right there should be the left turn signal indicator. Hook up my power and we can watch the left turn signal work. <laughs> <laughs> That's me doing it. It really doesn't blink like that. I can make it do whatever I want to make it. Next is the right turn signal, which is 15. And that one is way down here. In fact, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight from this end. Six, seven, eight. So right there should be the right turn signal. 
Right turn signal. We've done just about all we can do here inside the instrument cluster. The rest we're going to have to do off the harness side inside the truck. This is the connector inside the truck, and this is where I'm going to pull the wires out from. This is where I'm going to run the wires for my new gauges, like my coolant temp, my oil pressure, and all that stuff is going to go through here and then through my hole in the firewall. So everything is basically going to collect up in this area. I only need to pull a few wires out of this harness, and that's what I intend to do. So I'll pigtail these wires off and connect those to the gauges when the time comes. We can hook up some power and ground so we can set things up. And I also thought about plugging in the headlight switch so we can check some of those things and just verify what we've got going on here. But before I do that, I'm gonna open up this insulation so I can actually find the wires that are coming into here. And also, it almost looks like I can take this connector apart. Oh, sweet. Oh, that's perfect. Home mechanic gave me this and he says, this thing's gonna change your life. And it's a seam ripper. And it's for doing stuff, just stuff just like this. So you can go in under tape or what have you. Uh, you know what? He was right. I mean, home mechanic, oh man, he's right about a lot of things. Cause that, that did feel life changing, honestly. Seam ripper, these things, if they're a buck, it's too much. <laughs> but even if it was, considering what it just did, really happy with that. I'm going to power up the truck in the way that we've been doing this whole time. Hook my power probe up also. Also going to hook the headlight switch up as well as the dimmer. This is how the connector is inside the dash. This little piece off to the side here is the piece that I just threw away. That's the plastic clip that went up into this part. So as the connector slid up into here, that's, that's where the plastic clip goes. That's how I'm orientating it. 150 black should be this guy down at the bottom right here. It is a ground. And then we can double check. We can go in here and say, okay, that wire coming off of there, it's just black. So 150 is just a black wire coming out. So bottom left hand corner should just be a black wire. And lo and behold, look right here, all the way down in that corner, black wire. And we're going to label this as ground. I used to use masking tape and a marker. This is so much better. It just holds up better. Thanks for rolling up on me like that. Appreciate it. Now I'm gonna test my theory and see if the harness actually contains the wire for the high beams. So it comes up from down here and comes in just two down from where our ground was. It should be light green. So if we got a light green here in the harness, that could be our high beam indicator. There's the wire. I'm going to verify that theory by first turning on the headlights. This should do something, I hope. Yeah, it's high beam. Turning that off. That light green wire is going to be our high beam, so we'll cut that out. So it's like high beam. I think I figured out a better way to do this is I'll start looping before I ever go to the wire. Now the left turn signal, which was 14, which was uh, down over here, says it's a light blue wire if you follow this over and down. Uh, and that's the one that was seven over from the top. Okay, turn key on. Ha, you can actually hear it working. This should be, ah, and see it out there. Five, six, seven, should be this one. So there it is. And that's that light blue wire, just like the diagram says. Right, right turn is number 15, and that is come up here, dark blue. And this one was eight over from the right on the top. Seven, eight. We found it. And sure enough, it's dark blue. Every time I think of right turn, I think of that Clint Eastwood movie from back in the day. Right turn, Clyde. Was that pink Cadillac? I don't remember. Every which way but loose, that's what it was. Thank you, cameraman Brian, for being as old as me. You ancient dude, you. Even the messiest printouts like this, which mine aren't perfect, are better than masking tape. <laughs> Trust me on that. And we need the all-important illumination circuit, which was right next door to the ground. 
it says here tan white is coming from the headlights and stuff so I'm gonna say it's like a tan white right there turn on the headlights and dimmer switch there it is like I had to turn the dimmer switch on emergency emergency <laughs> and sure enough it's a little gray wire Now I need an ignition hot source. I'm looking on this list and I'm finding a couple. I found that this one, 39, ignition coming out of here and 39 is, where are you, right about there? Comes down over, it's gonna be a pink black wire. And if I continue to follow it over, it goes over to here to a power distribution that goes out to a few different things. But that's a nice ignition hot. The other one I found uh, actually goes to the brake light circuit and I, I'm kind of happier with this so I'm gonna use this one and it is one two three four five six seven eight down so here's a pink black wire on the other side of that it's grounded now I'll turn the ignition on it's on definitely ignition hot I want one more wire and that is going to be for my parking brake. So whenever my parking brake's on or my brake fluid gets low, it would be nice to know that. And I'm going to install a special illumination for this that's not included in the gauges. So I need to know where the signal is coming in now. And near as I can figure this park anti-lock light, number 33, which is, uh, where are you, where are you, where are you? There. So this one right here, this wire, it is the tan white and this goes over to the parking brake switch uh, manual brakes only. So I'll be able to tell if I've left my parking brake on if I do this. And it looks like all this is going to need is ground because when you follow this over to here, it goes down to the fuse box. It's getting power and as long as it's grounded, this, the uh, light will light up. And it looks like it's, what was it, tan white? Yeah, tan white wire. Second one over. Yeah, it looks like that one right there. So tan white wire, this one. Turn the ignition on. I think I'm right there. Nothing right now. Sweet. So that grounds it. Since it's grounding it, it's going to need power from somewhere, which I may need to rig that up via the light. So in other words, wire the light to power. And then when this grounds it, the light will light. Oh no! No! I'm not getting to the end of my stuff. Oh, that's the last one. I need to order another one of these things. Oh no! This is. We need to get this ASAP. Not during a build. No! I'm glad I got this far though. Okay, with all this stuff pulled out of the harness. Well, looks like that's going to have to stay pulled through. So now when the gauges show up, I'll be very ready. In fact, this is the tachometer. I didn't know that. I'd print something out, but got no ink, got no paper. Done. As long as we're on topic of getting gauges set up for when the gauges arrive, one of the gauges I'll be installing is an air fuel gauge. The air fuel gauge I'm getting doesn't come with any of the equipment to actually measure the air fuel. It actually ties into another something. In this case, this NG NTK uh, Wideband O2 sensor is where it's going to get its signal from. So I'm going to get this all set up so that we can have wideband working in our gauge set. There's only a, a couple of type of uh, these air fuel meters that work with the Speed Hut setup. This is one of them. Ooh, an O2 sensor bung. It escaped. Instructions. Here's the actual wideband itself. I'm just going to set that aside. This is the display. And actually it does display air fuel right there, but you know, it's not nearly as pretty as the one that's going in the dash. There we go, there's our harness. That's really what we're after. Here are the major components of this, which is stupidly simple, honestly. Uh, it's just got this one connector that plugs back into the display slash, I don't know, let's call it a control unit. And then the other plug plugs into the O2 sensor, or the wideband, I should really call it. And then it gets power and ground. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come into the signal wire, which is this green one. We're going to splice into that and run that over to the gauge setup. 
uh, that will give us our air fuel reading. So at some point we'll splice into this, but we've got to locate this, locate the harness, and uh, then we'll do our splicing and connecting our power and grounds where they go. This is the part that's going to go to my unit inside the dash, and this is all the stuff that can live out here. Now I can do the power and ground inside the truck, but I can also do it outside the truck because I got a power distribution right up here that I'm about to hook stuff up, in, up to anyway and a ground right next to it, so that just might be convenient. This is going to go through, well, yes, my very special pass-through. And look, look at that. That wide connector just right through it. Right through. That's fantastic. And there's still room for more. I'm going to run this over in that direction because there's empty space over there. And I've got plenty of wire. So here we go. Up over stuff and I'll see you over there. Done. So the O2 sensor wiring passes through the firewall. This is going to stay inside because I need to wire it up to an ignition hot source and a ground. I've already clipped the ends off. This is way too much wire also. Uh, I'll sort that out in a moment. But I need to keep this inline fuse in here because, well, that way the circuit is still fused. O2 sensor heaters uh, can draw some amps. And I'm actually considering using that, that same spade connector. Um, gonna piggyback onto my other one. I'm just gonna take this that is already powering up. I can't remember what that's powering up. Radio maybe? Anyway, taking this ignition hot source and uh, I'm gonna piggyback the wire for the O2 sensor into that one too. You might remember this being the ground I made for the exhaust cutout, which uh, I'm also tying into the exhaust cutout circuit. I found out that that exhaust cutout was tied into that ignition hot circuit. I think that is ideal for this. The exhaust cutout's not gonna be active all the time. Doesn't really matter, they're both coming off the same deal, so. I have supreme confidence that this will work out fine. I won't need all this wire. Like this is way too much, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. The idea here is I just wanna cut this outer sheathing away. And once I've done that, I can cut the power wire to length. The ground wire's gotta be a little longer because it's gotta reach over there. So we still got our fuse. Hold the end of this off. We can send our ground up and over. So since we made our own ground, we've got to give it a number. It's like whenever you look up wiring diagrams, grounds like have like G24, some designation. Well, we have power and ground. So let's turn the ignition on and see what happens to it. Yeah. Just powered up. Sweet. All right. Now let's tie into the signal wire, run it back to the gauge cluster where we need it. And we will have a wire for that. This is where all my gauge stuff will get wired up. It's going into a yellow wire, so I'm going to use some yellow wire because on the counter I got some. I'm going to go through this same tack opening. I got this wire coming through. Try to send that over in that direction. One might think, hey Eric, why not get that steering column out of the way? Well, maybe I'm not that smart. I don't know. Good. Good. I don't like doing this, but I'm about to use one of these, and it's just, it's not my thing. But in this case, I think it's what we need.
I'm going to open this up enough to slip this wire through. It's because the green wire is, is the signal wire. We can test this. I can turn this on. I can actually plug in the sensor. I can turn it on and I can check the voltage on the yellow wire. And if I'm seeing the same voltage there that I'm seeing here, it's connected. My new sensor, plugged in, boom. This is my voltmeter. There's a ground. It's just easier to do it this way than to try to like hold it on something. Meter and I'm gonna set it to it's two volts should be plenty. We'll need to trim our wire and we'll poke into it. And all we can do is turn the key on. Okay, that's on. Yep. I'm getting a reading. Oh, you know what? It might have heated up. Let's try this. Yep, there it is. 16, which is super lean. Well, it's saying an air fuel ratio of 16. Um, these usually work on five volts, so that's maximum voltage coming back. And if I turn it off and it goes away, I know I'm on the signal wire, so I'm good. And now comes the part where this setup work that I did here is gonna pay off. Now I'm gonna wire <coughs> all of these uh, gauges in. And one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the wiring for the transmission temperature gauge through the firewall. Before I get too far, I'm going to mark this as trans temp. Also going to mark the inside here. I do not need all this wire. I'm going to try something different here. I've been finding that using these is faster and when you've got different size wires like I do here seems to be the best solution. So it solders it and seals it all in one shot just with a heat gun. So far it seems to work pretty good. Something else I've got to add with the speed hut gauges to the dash, one more hole to drill, and that is the dimmer switch. So the illumination circuit for the speed hut gauges have their own separate dimmer switch. I think what better place to put it than right here. This is the illumination circuit for everybody in this cluster. figure out what size hole to drill. It's like 1764. It's weird how you open up a box of drill bits and you find like in fractions the size drill bit you need. So I have a 1764 drill bit. There is nothing behind here. So I'm not worried about it interfering with anything. We want to get all perfect with it. I think if I just go over there, that corner, Cross it with this. That should be about the middle. So you just draw an X on anything from corner to corner and you'll be able to find the center. I'm just gonna drill into my hand with this one. Some tough plastic, GM. Good job. That's what he's saying, the hole needs to be bigger. Cause that's what it feels like you're saying. I can make the hole bigger. I have more drill bits. Fine, B9 30 seconds. Oh, that's better. Weirdly, they got that little piece sticking up right there. 
on the switch that when you try to run it down flush, it's not going to run down flush. What's my solution here? All better. That'll work. Yeah, 3 8 was too small. I just got to get an adjustable wrench. 3 8 was too small and 10 millimeter didn't quite do it and 11 millimeters too big. I know. Let's use a flex size fastener. What's a flex size fastener? Well, that's the point. We're going to confuse everybody. Okay, so I've got this cranked all the way over to the right. So I will put the indicator on accordingly. Oh, look at that. I got a full sleep sweep of right to left. So this is the tack signal coming out, which is going to have to connect to this, which, yay, everything is yellow up here, right? And by the way, those shrink connector things I'm using are these. I'll link them in the description. This is my GPS speedometer. It needs to be mounted with a clear view of the sky. So it likes to look at the sky because it's checking satellites to say, hey, how fast am I going? Because of this, this speedometer is, well, pretty accurate. But it also has some neat little features like how quarter mile times that you can program it so it knows that when you've gone a quarter mile and it can tell you all that stuff. And I thought probably the best place to come down through is right up under our speaker grill. Hopefully this goes somewhere. Hopefully someplace where I can find it. I don't know if you can see it, but I just spotted it right flipping there, like right in that hole is the other end of that speedo cable thing and it's got to go right here so it knew where it wanted to go i'm gonna cut some plastic because that's what's in my way and i'm really hoping not to cut wires while cutting plastic this is serious plastic very serious plastic I'm beginning to wonder if i'm using the right tool well this guy cut through plastic great before Bam. This is a signal wire. I can't cut it. So I have to pull as much through here as I can. I was just gonna position this here, run it up along the windshield, but I'll have to deal with all this excess behind here. No, I'm just gonna leave it there for now. This only plugs into one thing. So I'm not too worried about it being worked. Here's a look at the wiring that I'm about to do. Um, these are the three main wires that go into the main uh, power distribution uh, from before, but the top needs to go to uh, 12 volts keyed ignition, so the red is going to go to that, the black is going to go to ground, and the 12 volts dash lighting goes to this white, and that's to illuminate the needles on the gauges. I think that worked. This is the ignition hot. Goes to the red wire. Yeah, keyed ignition, red wire. So I'll use this ground for my turn signal and my brake light, and I'll use this ground for the instrumentation stuff. Uh, this one I'll make my own connector and I'll put together the three wires for those grounds on those lights and put a connector on my ground 
and this ground for the instrument cluster will stay as the instrument cluster ground. Just to make it easy to find, it's a companion connector. I'm going to put connectors on each one of these wires that are going to go to the lights. So I've got one connector for all the grounds. I'm going to take all the light grounds and I'm going to put them under this. But the turn signals, the high beams, and the parking brake are all these. And I'm going to give them all bullet connector connections like that so I can easily hook them together and unhook them plus these feel a bit more compact and they're kind of insulated when they're together so I'm not worried about things touching one another when they're getting crammed in behind all this junk. Excellent. Turn signals I do one with one connector and one with another kind of connector. So in other words I put a female on one and I put a male on the other that way I don't mix them up. Left turn can be female. Anybody want ice cream? Ice cream truck outside. Ah, uh, the fuel gauge. I have to figure that out. That's our last, last one we got to deal with. I'm sorry I didn't cover the fuel pump installation, but at that time when I did install the fuel pump, I took the opportunity to check out the wiring going to the sending unit in the tank. And I found that there's a pink wire and a black white wire uh, that I basically took and ran all the way up into the gauges directly. I didn't take anything out of here, out of this connector. I just took these wires and ran them up through my pass through in the firewall and made sure that they went to the gauge assembly directly. But if you were going to do this yourself, you could do it one of two ways. You could find this black white wire and this pink wire, which I think is the best case scenario since your ground is, is actually a part of the circuit. Or so long as you had the pink wire and uh, you could ground the sending unit anywhere, uh, but you really need the pink signal wire going up to the gauge. Coolant temp wire, gonna run this guy through our gauntlet of wires. The more things I push through there, the less room I have. Sweet. This will be marked coolant temp. This is the oil pressure. This one has the special three plug on it. Ooh, catch it on the other side. I think my pass through is gonna prove out to be just enough. Here's the fuel level wiring, and it can go all the way back to the tank. I don't need this, because here is the fuel gauge ground. So this is the ground going to the tank. And then my last wire up here is the fuel gauge coming out. So all I really need to do is make this connector. So I'm just gonna strip this thing out and uh, just connect all these wires, call it fuel gauge, call it done. Require going over to the bench and opening that up a little bit. See? It's all wrapped up like a deli sandwich. I'm putting a piece of shrink tube on here now to just kind of clean it up a bit. Black wire is going to go to ground, white wire is going to go to uh, the signal. I can just recheck that, but I can't see how that would work any differently. White wire, fuel level signal, fuel sender should be connected to the, fuel sensor ground should be connected to the sense, fuel level sensor, if you do not have one, just go to a ground. But I do have a fuel level sensor ground, so I'm good. Went through great pains to get that. Lost many lives to get this information. Help me, Obi-Wan. You are my only hope, brother. Yeah, I'm digging using these on different size wires like this. 
because when you've got a big wire and a small wire and you're trying to connect them through a connector, you have to choose the larger size connector in order to bring them together. But this solders them and shrink tubes it all at the same time, which is kind of saving me a bit of time. Just gonna give that a minute to set up and then I'll do the other one. They're kind of close together and I don't wanna overheat it. That's my best one yet, I think. Semi-Pro. The kit did come with an inline fuse. I did not use it because I was taking my power from a fused source. So in other words, if I had put this in there, it would have just been redundant. Also, it would have been behind this whole cluster and everything, kind of useless to me. But this is fused. All this stuff is fused going up into here. All I did was basically eliminate what was going to the original cluster and I'm now making it go into my instruments, that's all. So if you don't have a fuse and you're wiring things up from scratch, well, absolutely put this in there. Otherwise, well, you can probably get away with just like what I did. I never tested any of these. Oh. Beep, 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 beep. That seems like enough. Can connect back here somewhere. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so that obviously we'll go to ground. This is left turn. Yes. Right turn, that means right turn is female. Oh yeah. Okay, I think with the exception of well, we already did the fuel gauge, so that's, that's all. Everything else just plugs in from here. I forgot that the illumination is also gonna need a power and ground. It's gonna need uh, illumination off the illumination circuit for the uh, truck, and it's going to need a ground. But this is attached to this outer piece, and I wanna be able to remove different parts of the dash just like I have it now for serviceability, therefore, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add pigtails coming off of both of these. I'm gonna redo these. And those pigtails are gonna have these bullet connectors. And I'm gonna also put bullet connectors on these. So I can just plug right in to there and remove this whole outer dash assembly and not have to worry about it if I ever need to service it. I'd like to add a little bit of clarity to this part of the video. Now this is that uh, inverter also has the dimmer switch and everything involved and you have to wire this up separately. Uh, this gets the 12 volts coming from the dash, the signal that you get when you turn the headlights on that I showed you earlier and also a ground. But you might also notice that this other circuit that has the white, black and red wires also on the white wire gets the dash lighting going to it and that is for the uh, needle illumination. Now what I've also included in this that I didn't show you is when I installed the shifter I ran a wire for the lighting for that so there's a lighting that goes behind the indicator on the shifter the big red wire that you see that's also going to this dash lighting so when I turn on the headlights not only will the gauges illuminate but also the indicator on my shifter Notice I did one of each, that way you can't plug it in wrong. Now I'm just getting fancy. Since these two wires go together. High beam. Uh, blue with white. Not all of these need to be connected. In fact, we're just checking illumination right now. So, we can't expect to get readings from sensors that are not plugged in. So 
is sort of giving us a preview of what it's going to be like to stuff all these things behind here. I'm going to go grab the steering column and plug that in so we can test all this stuff. They moved. Ah, you know what I've got to do? i got to plug in the headlight switch to go the rest of the way. So why are the turn signals on? Turn signals should not be on. Where's my gorgeous red glow? Alright, let's see if this works. I have to figure out why those turn signals are just on. But my shifter is lighting up and my dash is lighting up, so there's that. But those turn signals should not be doing that. What about high beams? Oh, there it is. So they're working. But my parking brake and the other stuff, why? Why is it doing that? Welcome back viewers. For me, it's been about a day. For you, mere seconds. I have resolved all the issues I was having during the last clip, and I'm gonna share with you how I fixed those things. First, there was the issue of uh, whenever you turn the lights on, both of these green lights would come on up the top for the turn signals. And you'd be like, what? Why is it doing that? Another thing that I noticed uh, when I did the turn signals themselves is they would flash really quickly. And I said to myself, you know what? That's almost like a bulb issue or some ground issue. So I got to thinking and I got to remembering a little bit about when I first uh, disassembled the whole front end and took all those lights out. And I remembered it had two very important ground connections that go to all those lights up front. So I came in here, took my trusty power probe, hooked up this ground. So this is now grounded. And now see what happens. Turn on the lights and look, they're not on. If I turn on the turn signal, it blinks normally and goes where it should. Cool, right? And I'm sure the astute viewer might have noticed that also on the speedometer, you'll see that that turn signal is working as well. I added that to the wiring. I figured, eh, it can't hurt. What the heck? So that is now a part of everything. Parking brake. Now that was a little tricky because I remembered that whenever you activate the parking brake, it actually grounds the circuit. I didn't have any power going to that whatsoever. So I actually had to run ignition power from the same thing that's powering up the gauges here. I ran an ignition power to the parking brake uh, light and the other side is a ground so now it works but what's weird is i didn't get a chance i didn't get it to work initially when i was trying to activate it with my power probe like doing power and ground going through like i showed you over on the bench and how to activate the led and i kept scratching my head why why isn't this working and then i realized led stands for light emitting diode and some diodes only allow electricity to flow in one direction so i changed things around i changed the ground to power and power to ground and now I have an indicator light for my parking brake. One more thing. Things were not as bright. In fact, you know, it's kind of bright in here now, but you can't really see uh, the red. In fact, things look a little pink in here. But what I discovered was this dimmer switch was down here as I was working, but as soon as I put it up. So this all still runs through this old dimmer switch. So this actually has two dimmer switches now, but I didn't have this one turned all the way up and therefore I wasn't getting full power to the gauges. So they weren't, they weren't illuminated as much as they would be if it had full power, but now it does have full power and much happier. Also, I just went plugged in all the sensors to the gauges just to see if they would work. The voltmeter actually works off the voltage giving to the gauge set. So that is a little low and I'm not surprised by that because, well, we've been running the battery, not charging it up. The fuel sender went all the way to full. It was on empty, but you actually program this for the resistance values. Now I recorded the resistance values of my sending unit in the, in the tank 
and I just need to program that into here. Just to give you a little more detail on the uh, fuel gauge and how this works, it's set up so that you can uh, calibrate it for different resistance values based on whatever uh, sender you're using. General Motors usually uses 0 to 90, which is what I use and what worked for me, but as you can see, you can set it up for several different types. This is outlined in the instructions on how you can do this. Uh, it's really not all that difficult, but you can set it up for a, a number of different resistances, as you can see here. So this being at zero oil pressure, that makes sense. This water temperature being way down here also makes sense. Uh, this transmission temperature also makes sense, but I just thought of something. I could go out there with my heat gun on those sensors and we could watch those work if we want. I also forgot one more thing that I did. Uh, the gauge set, uh, the spinometer in particular, requires a 12 volt constant power. This is the power distribution for the truck. I took the fused uh, power, or I took the fuse and put it in line for this power that's going to the speedometer and that's going to be on all the time. This makes it so that when you first start it up, it acquires a signal much faster than it would if you didn't have this constant 12 volts. So you don't necessarily have to hook this up, but if you do, what it's gonna do is it will basically come up faster and acquire a signal much quicker. And if you store the vehicle for a long period of time, you could just come in here and pull this fuse and you wouldn't have that parasitic draw happening while you had it parked. Although I recommend just disconnecting the negative battery cable if you're gonna store something for a long time anyway. Start with coolant temperature. All right, so that one works. Now let's uh, do transmission temperature. Now the wiring and everything that you saw in this video was not the finished wiring. I actually went back in and uh, got rid of some of the excess wires and wired things up as I just showed you, made sure that the turn signals and the parking brake light worked. Uh, but know that what you saw in this video is not the final installation. There's less wiring behind here and I simplified it a bit uh, when I connected the turn signals and everything together. So there was more work that was done. It's just not shown in the video. Here's the end result of all that hard work. So all the cutting, all the wiring, all the fabricating, whatever you want to call it, this is uh, the end result. So instead of that goofy dash that was in here before, this is what we have now. I turned off all the shop lights so we could see what these look like all lit up. Yeah, cool, right? And the uh, dimmer. This is what the dimmer does. This is the one that came with the speed hut stuff. The needles are always illuminated as long as the gauges are on. And to get rid of this awful buzzing, let's do that. Here they are, all illuminated and installed. Well, let's see what they do. Some of you may have noticed all the red lights that come on whenever I start this up, and those are all warning lights, indicator lights that you can set the parameters for. So I can go in, I can set low fuel, I can set uh, low oil pressure or high oil pressure. Uh, same with the volts and, and the temperature and, and all these other warning lights that you see here. So you can actually set those. Uh, another thing you can set is the brightness of these. So you can make these brighter or dimmer. All this is covered in the instructions uh, for the gauges. Well, viewers, that is gonna be the conclusion Conclusion of the gauge cluster installation on hashtag ETCG Dad's truck. As you can see, everything works and functions as it's intended, and I like the way it looks. I'm very happy, and I hope the information contained in these past two videos uh, helps you if you're considering making a custom gauge cluster, either for one of these trucks or for anything. Think of what I just showed you as a stepping off point. I mean, custom work is custom work. You're going to make it into what you like. I hope the things I've showed you give you some ideas on how to go about that. I will also put links in the description to uh, additional videos that are related to this, including other videos in the ETCG Dad Truck series, uh, also parts, tools, and that type of thing. So please check the description for additional information. Also, there's a link to a video that is an extended version that contains both parts uh, of this video if you're interested. For premium members of my website, link down in the description. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate it when you do that kind of stuff. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks again.